all of that is taking place in places where people are wearing the mask, and it's also taking place in blue states that have much more restrictive mandates than we do. And yet, Governor Ivey's rationale is, well, the reason we're seeing an increase in cases is because people aren't wearing the mask. Then why do we have a mask mandate in place? If the mandate doesn't work, if people are not doing it, then why is the mandate in place in the first place? It's obviously not causing people to wear their mask if that is the case. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Governor Ivey has extended the mask ordinance to December 11th, so the mask mandate is, is now prolonged even further than it already has. I don't understand why, but Meemaw apparently thinks that we've been bad and have to stay in our rooms and, and wear the diapers on our faces for longer. I, I don't understand the rationale here. The numbers, there, there's nothing in the stats that suggests that this is a good idea whatsoever. There's nothing that suggests that states that have kept a mask mandate in place are having a, a better time of it or a worse time of it. In fact, you can look at the stats. We've done this over and over and over again. The, the opposite seems to be true. I'm not saying that not having a mask mandate makes you less likely to die or less likely to get higher case numbers. I'm just saying that there doesn't really seem to be any correlation between the two of them. It seems as though the, having a mask mandate can, is uh, makes actually contracting the virus, there is no effect, there's no relationship at all between those two things. But Governor Ivey did offer an olive branch in her incredible magnanimity. She said that uh, we're going to be relaxing capacity restrictions on places like businesses and restaurants. Thanks, Mima. Really appreciate it there. You're really doing us a solid by allowing more people to be in a business. Here's the thing that's so frustrating about this. If the masks work, why do we have capacity restrictions at all? If the masks actually do what they're supposed to do, which is keep people from spreading it as long as everyone's wearing it, why do we need to have any capacity limits? And if capacity is the thing, then why do we need to have masks? None of this makes any sense. It doesn't make sense to do both at the same time. Because if the mask actually did stop the virus, there would be no reason to worry about being around large crowds of people. Because you got a mask on, that's going to protect you theoretically. But if capacity is the thing, being around other people is the thing, and that actually is what's spreading the virus, if that were the issue, then the mask wouldn't matter. And so it just it's it's absolutely absurd this thing that she's doing, none of the restrictions, and, and Kay Ivey is like a lot, a lot of other governors, unfortunately. A lot of the restrictions and regulations that are being put in place don't have any basis in science. There's no data that suggests that what they're doing will actually be effective or do what they want it to do. But why is it... One thing that should be a big consideration here is... Is anybody actually adhering to the mask mandates anyway? I think a lot of them are. Is anybody actually doing what the, the capacity mandates say? Probably not. Granted, this is anecdotal because there is no hard data on this. And there will never be hard data on this because people are not going to be honest about it. They're going to hide it and conceal it. And there's not enough time to really do a survey of this. But I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. I'm going into different places, uh, different businesses, different restaurants. Nobody is adhering to the capacity limit. Now, granted, I'm, I'm not saying that they're packed in there like corkwood or anything, but I'm just saying I've been I've gone out to several restaurants and they don't have tables closed. Some of the big national chains do. They'll actually have some of their tables closed, but even then, I've seen people eating on tables that are supposed to be marked off and. Uh, they're not supposed to be able to eat in. And I don't, I just don't think that this is going to make a difference because she's saying, well, we're going to loosen those restrictions up and let you let more people go out and, and do that. Uh, okay, but 
I don't think anybody was actually listening to them by this point anyway. It seems like the people of Alabama have decided amongst themselves, which is a decision that I agree with, that we're kind of out of the woods on this one, at least for the most part, and they've kind of taken to where they're not as serious about the restrictions when it comes to capacity, and they're not as strict when it comes to mask mandates. They're just kind of tired of this, and they're just kind of letting it go, which I think is a good thing. But it does go to show and sort of highlights the fact that just because you put a regulation out there doesn't mean that people are going to adhere to it. And so it kind of reminds me of a thing that Auburn did a few years ago when I was in college there. For the first two years, I think, I think it was, when I was at Auburn, we had this thing called Dead Day. And the way Dead Day works is it's right before finals, which, by the way, are coming up. So college students out there, I feel you. Been there, too. The way that Dead Day worked is it was a day that you couldn't schedule any events associated with the university whatsoever. You were not allowed to have any kind of class, no test, nothing. You, you couldn't make assignments due on that day. just wasn't a thing. And the reason for that is because Dead Day was a day that was supposed to be set aside to give students the ability to study. Well, they had to do something goofy with the schedule one year. And I guess it just got compressed or whatever. And so they scheduled dead day on a Saturday. Really? Really, Auburn? You're going to take a day that we already had and say that, well, that's dead day now. It's kind of like if you have a really crappy friend that comes to your birthday party and while he's at your birthday party, finds an object that you already own and wraps it up as a present and gives it to you as though he's giving you a gift. I'd rather you just not get me anything than to act like you're giving me something by giving me something I already have. At least if, it, at least if you're just, you know, giving me something that I already have, or sorry, at least if you're not giving me something that I already have, at least then I could be like, well, you know, it kind of sucks that I didn't get a present from you, but whatever. If you're giving me something that I know is already mine, that I already had anyway, you're not doing me any favors, and frankly, I'm just kind of ticked off by the fact that you're there pretending that you're doing me this great favor or doing something that was nice or thoughtful for me. And this is kind of the way that I feel about what Governor Ivy is doing right now. She's acting as though she, out of, you know, the generosity of her heart, which is such a big status thing to do anyways, to act like they're permitting us to, to act as though the people in government are permitting us to do something like engaging in voluntary commerce in a free market. Uh, to Governor Ivy to permit restaurants to increase their capacity and have a larger amount of people in their stores than they already were when they were kind of ignoring her and already doing their own thing anyway. Th that's not a gift that you're giving to me. It's like Auburn with the whole dead day thing. I would rather them just ignore it. Uh, another thing, too, that she talked about when it came to restaurants is she touted them using plexiglass, which is incredibly stupid because it's plexiglass. It's just a barrier that goes up, I guess, between booths or between tables. Does anybody not understand how the virus works? Are you blanking on that one? Because it seems to be based on the most recent evidence that we have, and this has been out for about a month now, that it's not even surface contact. In other words, water droplets fall onto a surface and you pick it up and then touch your eye or something like that, that we originally believe that it seems as though a bigger factor is people being in close proximity with each other while the air conditioner is running. Uh, I think about 15 minutes is what they're saying the limit is, is going to be. Well, if that's the case, do we think that the virus can't go over the plexiglass or beside the plexiglass? No, when you're in the magical fortress of seatedness, the, uh, the virus apparently can't travel anywhere, and if you put up a plexiglass barrier, the virus will just know, oh, we don't need to go over that. They got plexiglass. <laughs> I mean, it's just stupid. It's like... Uh, even though I, I love the Blue Angels, I'm not trying to diss the Blue Angels. They're incredibly skilled. I, I think that it's really cool that they do what they do, and I know that their feature is primarily recruiting for the Navy, not actually fighting off bad guys. I, I get that. 
they're kind of like Captain America for the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of the Captain America movie in First Avenger, where he's not actually fighting bad guys, he's just going out and recruiting, basically a showpiece. Uh, it's kind of like that, like the, <laughs> and again, I, I love him, no disrespect to the Blue Angels, but it's just funny, it's kind of like, uh, the the bad guys are going to look up and like, Oh, the perfect diamonds! What are we going to do? <laughs> Did you see how close those planes flew to one another? It's not a combat skill, it's for show. And that's what the plexiglass seems to be. That it's, it's not actually doing anything to curb the spread of the virus. And by the way, there have been several studies that have been published now that have shown that restaurants and bars are not a significant spreading point anyway. This is done, one even came out of New York and said that restaurants and bars in New York weren't spreading events. That there weren't people that were catching the virus from going in there. And so, again, none of this is based off of science or data. They're basically just doing arbitrary things because they can. Now, I'm not saying that Governor Ivy has malicious intent here. She probably really does think this will help, but there's no reason to think that it actually will. And that's why this whole thing is just dumb. And I had a friend actually bring up this point that I hadn't even thought of, so kudos to them on this one. Who's going to clean all the plexiglass? Because plexiglass looks really bad when it gets stuff on it because, you know, it's, cl it's plastic, it's clear. And so it gets really dirty, it's difficult to clean. And so not only are you going to have to, as a small business that probably has already been hit super hard by this pandemic if you're a restaurant, not only do you also, if this is the case, you have to take the financial hit of buying a whole bunch of plexiglass, which is super expensive, and you're already struggling to just make break even. Frankly, you know, you're doing super well if you even break even this year because of all the stuff that has happened. Now you also have to pay extra labor costs for your employees to clean the plexiglass. I mean, this whole thing doesn't make any sense. It's an undue burden upon the businesses of Alabama, and Governor Ivey shouldn't even have suggested this. This is, should not be something that is in the mandate that she's talking about here. And then she said this line, which I thought was pretty good. People need to wear the mask so that we can stay open. Excuse me? We've got to wear the mask so that we can stay open. So what, you're going to lock us down if we don't wear the mask? Is that what you're telling us, Governor Ivey? Are we going to start another round of lockdowns? Because the World Health Organization, even they, who have been 100% on board with the whole mask thing, that at, back in the day were 100% on board with the shutdown thing, and granted they've not been the most consistent nor the most reliable, but my point is, they're an organization that has a stake in pretending as though shutdowns were a good thing because they were the ones telling everybody that they have to shut down. Even they came out a few weeks ago and said, shutdowns should not be used as a primary means of controlling the virus. If you need it to give your medical system time to catch up and be ready for when the virus hits, then it makes sense. But if you've already got plenty of the materials that you need, you don't have to do any preparation for it, which at this point we shouldn't have to do, and our, our hospitals are actually getting significantly better at treating the virus, not worse, then there's no reason to shut down again. And so what she's saying there is not that we need to shut down again because if you don't wear the mask, our numbers are going to get too high and we, we've got to shut that down. What she's saying there is you do what we tell you to do or else we're going to come up with another punishment for you. Governor Ivey, in her southern draw, southern woman charm kind of way, is saying, look, if y'all don't do what I tell you to do, I'm coming after you. We're going to have a punishment for you awaiting if you don't do what I tell you. Who does she think she is? This is nothing but a very thinly veiled threat. To which I say, bring it on, Mima. I The mindset ticks me off so much. The idea that the government knows what's best for you and will tell you what to do, and if you refuse to comply, then they are coming after you. They will make you to care. And this is something that Governor Ivey should not be doing. But I have to say, I think that my favorite part of the whole thing, the best part of her whole speech that she gave to the state, 
was when she was asked by a reporter why we're seeing a rise in cases, which was a good question. This journalist asked a very good question. Simple, low-hanging fruit, obvious, sure, but still it needed to be asked, and I applaud them for that. But her response was, because people aren't wearing their mask. So you're telling me that the reason that we're seeing an increase in cases is because people are not wearing their mask. Doesn't that kind of disprove the idea that a mask mandate works? I mean, if a mask mandate worked and everybody was wearing their mask, frankly, I don't think that that would do any good because we're also seeing basically exactly the same spike happening all around the world right now, including in other countries, in places like Italy and Asian nations where their people tend to be much more compliant, much more willing to do things like wear a mask. We're seeing it in Italy. We're seeing it in the UK, which is getting hammered right now. We're seeing all of those things. All of that is taking place in places where people are wearing the mask, and it's also taking place in blue states that have much more restrictive mandates than we do. And yet, Governor Ivey's rationale is, well, the reason we're seeing an increase in cases is because people aren't wearing the mask. Then why do we have a mask mandate in place? If the mandate doesn't work, if people are not doing it, then why is the mandate in place in the first place? It's obviously not causing people to wear their mask if that is the case. And here's the other thing. Prove it. Prove that people are not wearing their mask. How are you going to prove that to me? Are you keeping stats on this? Or do you have officers of the state of Alabama walking around checking off how many people are wearing their mask? No. Governor Ivey doesn't know this. She's just making a guess and throwing it out there because she thinks it helps her narrative. That's it. She has no idea if this is the case or not. And Scott Harris doesn't either. Now, he didn't respond to that, but if he had said the same thing, that wouldn't matter either. The idea that this magical mask, once you put it on, it makes you immune to the virus, and if people were just wearing their mask, we would have no new cases. Um, no. We seem to be having rates pretty similar to way before we had a mask mandate. There doesn't, There is no evidence worldwide that wearing a mask decreases the rates. None. And so, uh, you, you, even if you believe the idea that the masks themselves curtailed or made it less likely for you to contract the virus, there's absolutely no data whatsoever that the mandates are stopping the virus. And that's the reason that this is so stupid. And then she said at the end of this, look, I know this can't go on forever. Do you? Do you really? Because you seem to be acting as though you do think that it's going to go on forever. There's no end in sight, no plan, no benchmark that you give us. I mean, granted, this would be dumb, but at least if Governor Ivy was like, well, if we're getting below 800 cases per day or something like that, at least then there would be some kind of benchmark, but just, no, just sort of vaguely, well, I think we need to keep doing it, so we're going to keep doing it. Why do people in government act like they can control our lives? And here's the other thing. This all ignores the fact, everything that I've talked to you about this far, completely ignores the fact that the mask mandate is still unconstitutional. The Constitution of the state of Alabama does not afford the governor the authority to do this. And so, even if all of the other stuff weren't true, even if the mask actually did work, the reason that we weren't wearing the mask is because, or the reason that we were getting higher cases is because we weren't wearing our mask and we needed to enforce it more properly, even if the plexiglass thing worked, even if all that were true, still doesn't change the fact that Governor Ivey does not have the authority to do this. This is an unconstitutional act by her. And that's the first question that anybody should a ask when the governor does anything is, is this something that the governor can actually do? And if the answer is no, then they shouldn't be doing it. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? 
Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.